Hello, hello, good afternoon, and welcome to the Tea Break One Shot podcast for all your podcast related news on tech, gaming, entertainment in one shot. Um, it's available across all streaming platforms, including Podbean, or you can watch the stream on our YouTube channel, teabreak.com. Um, today, I'm introducing Danesh and Mufaddal. And <laughs> Hello. <I'm> in- <laughs> <laughs> myself sam uh today we're going to be talking about the nothing year which just released right or correct so nothing year and year a that's what we're talking about yes they're very complicated naming conventions we will come they've... to that we will come to yes, that yes uh we also have the ai humane pin which mm-hmm. is basically there's a lot of controversy around it thanks to mkbhd's video and we'll discuss that in a sec we also Indeed. have iPads. And what do we have on the movies and gaming front? Fallout. Fallout. Good. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just going to shake my head with you guys. That's if I know what you guys are talking about. Okay, Fallout. <laughs> cool, cool. You still didn't cool. watch it? Okay. No, no. I, I saw the trailer and I was like, no, absolutely not. Wow. It just did not wow. appeal to me. But we shall jump right. into that as it comes along. Yes. Um, Cool. Starting with Nothing Year. Now, I have waited for a few days to kind of show this around. Um, Nothing in general as a brand is really, really coming up. So what they had right now was called a community update. All right. And you guys have to love Nothing for this because they are just the hipsters of the world of technology. Um, yep. And in there, you know, they're all wearing casual clothes and they're all talk, talking about like the b- money they made and like, oh, things are going so well. And we took one year to reach one million and six months to reach two million and da 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 da. And like they did the whole thing, but the main idea was to show what they're up to in quarter one of 2024. And then they moved on to showing the year and year A. Now, coming before I show the products, uh, the, 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 you're absolutely right. They have a lovely nomenclature. Uh, and what they are doing is apparently they want to give up on ones and twos and threes. So first, when they launched, they launched year one, then they launched year two. But this year, they're like, nah, we're done with numbers. We're just going to launch year and year A every year, apparently. And I just don't know how that's going to work because... There is differentiation for a reason, but I wanted to know what you guys yeah. think. Like, would that work for you guys if you all were like, let's say, interested in nothing earbuds? Doesn't the AirPod do the same? I was I was gonna say like if you say yes from a I think from an initial marketing standpoint, right? It's the iPad Mini or Mini Two, Mini mm. Three. So if you're going into it, but they just call it the but, iPad Mini, right? But this is this is my point, right? We on our end, let's say cons- consumers or tech reviewers or even retailers, have to find a differentiation. So you'll go around and you're searching iPad Mini Fourth Generation. You're going around yeah. searching AirPods Three. Yeah. So even though they don't give it a name and they do this whole thing, the the, the audience needs a differentiation. Right. Um, now, for example, okay. Let me let me like show. Let me just switch over to the other camera and show this to you guys. All right. So, making my point here in my hand right now, I've got the nothing here two and the nothing here. Right now, if I hadn't told you guys the model numbers, you would not know which one is which in my hand right now. And the thing is, there have been a lot of updates to the products. So. Okay. Externally, they look the same because Nothing Year 2 won a bunch of awards for this case design and, 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 and everything. But internally, they've made some upgrades. So how are you supposed to know when they're in a store, they have to go ask and find? Anyway, I know I'll ramble on about this forever, but that's my point, that there just should be numbers. What's the big deal? Just keep it like one or two or three or whatever. But there yeah. has to be a way. Always. Anyway. The two products in my hand right now, right now the, on the in my right hand, I have the Nothing Ear, which are their flagship products. And in my left hand, I have the new Nothing Ear A. So what they've decided is they are going to be showing, uh, sorry, they're going to be offering two products to the users, um, a flagship one, but a cheaper option as well. So this one, the Nothing Ear A is just $800. In the UA here, it is going to be 379 dirhams. Whereas um, the bad. Nothing 
that's not bad at all. Whereas this one, the nothing here is going to be, I know in the UAE it's 549 in dollars. I think that's about 130. So really well priced products, but, uh, but yeah, really well priced products, but on the overall, I think, um, I, I think that the generic audience is going to have a distinct difference to see. Uh, let's talk about the nothing year A for a second. Okay. Um, there is also a yellow color in these. All right. And I'll show these to you guys in a second. Tell me what you guys think about this. Uh, oh, so damn. That looks funky. Right. Uh, so I basically like for... For people listening, um, the bud, the part where there is a bit of plastic, I guess, and the soft tip are going to be yellow while the rest of it is black. And the case is going to be transparent and wherever there's plastic, there's going to be yellow. I think it's super funky. I wish they had sent those, but uh, I'm not really going to complain or cry over it. So what's the difference then between the A and the okay. non? Okay, I'm glad you asked. So uh, let me first tell you the similarities so that the differences make more sense. Both of okay. these have 11 millimeter drivers. Both of these have great noise cancellation, which is apparently 1.8 times better than uh, the, the year twos, which I showed earlier. Um, both of them have this funky design, all that stuff. What the year has, which makes it the flagship, is wireless charging. The case has better um, uh, water and dust resistance where it's IP55 versus this, which is IPX2, which means that okay. in the case of these ones, your case can also get a little wet. And most importantly of all, the drivers on this are ceramic, which apparently is the it best for better. audio, much better. So what ends up happening? So this is, I think, for those people who just want that little bit better, but for the people who don't care, they launched just a simpler product where the uh, diaphragm for the driver is plastic in this one. It's a mixture of PMI and TPU, which is partly recycled plastic. So listen, but overall... Listening to them, have you? can you tell a difference? So listening to them... Visible? Listen, the first, I went to that... Uh, I went straight to that interstellar track. You know, the, okay. the one that... Yeah, 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 yeah. And... Zimmerman banger. Zimmerman... <laughs> I, the thing is, I I will not lie when I say I was confused on whether I was looking for it or I actually found it in terms of the better audio quality. Uh, the year A was a little tinny, just a little, like I said, because I was really looking for it. But I think that a regular person with commercial music and social media is just going to be perfectly happy with these. Like, you have to want the waterproofing and you have to want the um, wireless charging to get the flagship ones. That's what I would say. Or, or let us know in the comments if you want us to do a blind test from the office done. and we figure out whether or not we can tell the difference. Done, 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 100%. Uh, I think that's a good idea. But the other thing is, and I don't know the difference in this codec. Uh, maybe one of you can tell me if you know or producer Amara, if she's listening. But the, both these support AAC, SBC, and uh, LDAC. But this one supports LDHC 5.0. I don't know what that is. Does anyone know what that is? No. no. I only okay. know FLAC as being the most cleanest audio format, digital audio format. Fair. FLAC. Good to know. So I guess LDHC is just better than the rest because only the, only the flagship one has it. So yeah, on the overall, internally, they've also made some adjustments on the year compared to the year two where what they've done is they've added an extra mic here uh, they've added extra holes for um, uh, better wind flow uh, and all that stuff. And one thing about these is that if you look at the shape of this, uh, whatever, the, the the part that goes into your ear, I've always found them super comfy. I think I think they've, like, nothing has always done a really good job. And you both will be happy to know, uh, it apparently has a low lag mode for gaming on your uh, mobile. Um, okay. Yeah, so so that's uh, that's cool as well. On the overall, listen, the main thing to know, or let's say the biggest update to know about these is that now, what, 2024 is tiring. Uh, now they have AI embedded in them. We have chat GPT integration in these earbuds. Wow. Because we you know, needed what, that. Uh, oh, yeah. What's the, how, how do you use it? Like, right. like is it like Siri? 
So basically, uh, yeah. nothing has sort of signed a deal with ChatGPT, and they're going to be doing a lot of integration into the phone. What they're doing here is so I don't know if you guys know this, but the the let's say the primary feature of these earbuds is that you can pinch them for commands. Okay, okay. and basically, you can set one of the earbuds to be pinched to activate um, ChatGPT. Now, the example they gave when they presented this was you're walking. And you're on a podcast and you hear a cool concept and you want to know more about that cool concept. So you pinch on your earbud and you ask it and the chat GPT app and the nothing app will talk to each other and you will have a, a voice, uh, 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 whatever, a voice narration? talking to you, narration of what you want to know about. And if you want it, it'll also be later on, on your app. Now, I find this cool. It's really nice. But my thing is, we... Like all of us, when we've used chat GPT, we've used it very visually, right? Mm. I don't find myself going to chat GPT for knowledge, if that makes sense. That's yeah. Google's job, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so visually, I don't find myself saying, hey, chat GPT, create a script for me for the new nothing year and year two. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like the very task that chat GPT was created for is not valid in this scenario but yeah. who's to say that couldn't be the case in the future right and the nothing yeah. ear things already have them so they're the first fair. to do it fair i mean they were they, they were very open about the fact that this is a first time trial and you know lots of things mm. are in trial mode and whatnot but um but listen on the overall i think nothing creates some really nice products um I did not like this brand when it first started out. I'm really beginning to like it. One of the reasons I like it is because every product is individual. So you know how you use uh, an Apple AirPods and then you're there like, oh, use it with A Apple for the best thing. And Samsung does the same with theirs as well. Nothing mm. uh, with these, these anyone can use. You want them for your laptop, you can use it. You want them for your uh, uh, Windows, you can use it. Mac, you can use it. iOS, you can use it. Everywhere it's usable. And that I really like about it. I, I think that that's why the Nothing products like really work out for everybody. I'd be keen to try them out for that whole low latency in gaming and see whether or not uh, done. How, how do they work? Once once we know that uh, my house to your house is clear of our floods, I will send one across to you. And you can Fantastic. try it out. Uh, uh, how do they compare to the AirPods? Because I know everyone will ask this like oh it's a new thing how does it right. do well against the airports okay so i will not comment on these two right now because i haven't extensively like used them i've been using them for just over a day but if i talk about the year two which i did use extensively one my quality is amazing on uh the year twos compared to the airports considering the airports are considered the best when it comes to wireless mm -hmm. earbuds that is definitely one comfort i found um, the fit, and again, this is so subjective because years are so different, but I found the fit way better on the year two than the AirPods. But I did find myself feeling lethargic faster on these compared to the AirPods. So okay. that would be like a very simple comparison I would give. But again, I'm not the best person because as soon as open year came out, I switched to that. I haven't touched my AirPods since I got the Huawei free clips. Like I live on those. So, um, so, so from that perspective, I'm not the best, uh, person to compare, but I'll definitely kind of check that out and let you guys know. But yeah, cool. that's, uh, pretty much nothing here and, uh, nothing here. A. Eh? Awesome. So shall we move on to iPad rumors? <laughs> Yes, I do not. We do not have any uh, prep whatsoever, but I will tell you whatever I have heard about them. No issue. Apparently, there's rumors of new iPads, and we're on to Humane AI pin. <laughs> Sorry? There's rumors. We don't have anything prepared, right? <laughs> That's all you I will tell know, you. folks. I it will renders, tell you. wait for the launch. Think back to the 90s when you used to, or 90s is a little bit too early, maybe 2000s, 2000, you know, where it's okay. that anticipation oh. of a product launch and you were eagerly waiting and you didn't have all these, le you know, leaks and renders and all of this faff and bullshit. We didn't even know that they were going to launch. We just knew it yeah. when they launched it. Yeah. I like, agree. I agree. What was, was wrong with that? That was awesome. It was, man, it was one of those things where 
the first few times it happened, like the the great iPhone four leak where it all started from yeah. sort of right the the whole leaving it in a bar thing. It, I understand and, and I totally agree. The sad part came when it started becoming marketing strategy. All right, yeah, because yeah. I won't name the brand, but. I know a brand that has sent me something and be like, if you want, you can leak it. It's fine. And I'm like, no thanks, bro. No thanks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I yeah, hate it, it when it comes to cars. Like I've already seen everything about a car and it hasn't actually even launched yet because someone's taking video from delivery in the port and this, this, and this. Like literally I said to the brand before, like, what's the point? I've seen everything. I know all the specs. Yeah. Like other than with my own eyeballs, like who cares? Yeah, it really does take away, but people like rumors and people like to know ahead of time. So Sam, we will discuss the iPads for a few seconds. Uh, sure. But basically, all right, you guys know that I'm obsessed with trying to figure out a way where I can just switch to my iPad completely, right? I've wanted Indeed. this forever, all right? And I even did a bit of a test when I traveled just now for Egypt. For 10 days, I just had my iPad. I didn't carry my laptop with me, all right? And I think that they are so superbly powerful products. And I don't even have the Pro. I have the Air, which has the M1 chip in it. And it was amazing. Amazing. And don't get me wrong, it was amazing when I lived in my own world. The minute I had to collaborate or like have a call with you guys and have two, three tabs open, it's mm. definitely possible now because I've done this stunt before in 2019 when it was impossible. It's possible now you can expand to another screen. So like in my hotel, I connected it to the TV and that's where one screen was and the other was the iPad, which oh, I was actually cool. working on. Yeah, you can do a lot with these. And now with Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, all that on video editing is at its peak power. So I think that they're good devices. And there has been no update on the Pros in a while. In a while. Mm. I think it's been two or three years since they updated it. Um, because I think the iPads got pushed aside by Apple in this whole business of let's switch to our own processors with the yeah. M processors that most yeah, of us yeah. use now. Um, but I'm super excited because one, there is a rumor and this is the most important rumor for me. There is a rumor that the cameras are going to move to the side, making iPads properly horizontal devices because the current basic iPad has that. Yes. Oh, I was thinking side. No, 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 no. Not <laughs> I'm side. Like, what? what? As in side, as in currently yeah, yeah, the side of the is a frame. Yeah, device. Yeah. They are yeah. now switching. Rumor is that they're switching it to a horizontal device, and that is something I've waited for forever. Because I, I really don't see the point of having the cameras where they are, because you don't scroll socials on it, you don't record videos with it, you use it for its widescreen format primarily. The only time mm. I find myself putting my fo my iPad vertical is if I'm typing a document. That's when I turn the iPad around and I just continue typing my document because again, I want more retail space. So that is rumor number one. Rumor number two is that um, this, the iPads now will have, and you guys maybe can say it better, but it has all the Coolio features, which for the ray tracing and all that for gaming, because mm. they want to get oh, nice. better games onto the iPad, right? Um, so that's another one. Mini LED displays, and I think producer Amara has uh, mini LED, the, the, the last mini LED iPad Pro, but mini LEDs are coming to, um, I think, the both the Pros now, not just to one of them, because to get the mini LED, you had to get the 12.9 last time. So that's there as well. Mm. And last but not least, um, apparently iOS 18 is going to have better file management. And to me, that is the most, that is the thing where you lose an iPad immediately. It's gone. Yeah. You know, um, like for example, if right now you guys told me, Dan Danish, take these, take five pictures, two documents, and a video and share it with us, finished. <laughs> this iPad's game over. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> what are you saying, my friend? I'm under the water. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> it's not happening. So I think um, that, um, yeah, that's where kind of the iPads will go. Question for you guys. Uh, I'll ask it in separate ways. Stan, for you, I'm talking about like working, like your emails and your daily stuff and you know all that. And Muf, I ask you for gaming. Would you ditch your MacBooks for iPads? And where is that 
level where you'd make that decision. More few go wait, first. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, we count it down. Like three, two, one, and then you give a yes or a no. Ready? Okay. Three, two, one, no. Yes. No. Damn it. <laughs> Also, Muf, that was such a late no, bro. What were you waiting for? Yeah. I said no. Immediately. Sure. Maybe there's a lag. Second no. later. So, Let's for me... charge your internet. For me... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go for it, go for it. Yeah, at least it's not my uh, do, at least. I don't have a do. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Or don't. Ooh. 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 I can think much better. Uh, <laughs> anyways. You can uh, call people. Exactly, yeah. Uh, go for it. I don't have a Mac. I have a Windows where I play games, which is my main platform. I would, there's, there, there's very little reason for me to switch to an iPad or even a MacBook for gaming until games start to run better on Apple chipsets. Otherwise, they, there's no point. I am excited now that Apple is going to come into the gaming scene with their own stuff and metal and ray tracing and uh, uh, upscaling stuff, but mm. they are still a little too too far away for me to be be interested. But I okay. know that Apple can do it and they will do it, and that is very exciting because then there is a new hardware platform and it's okay. from Apple. I'm okay. very, very excited what, what so, they can do with it. Let me, let me ask a question because I don't live in this world that like you as a gamer live in. But um, the, the, do you think that a brand that has a closed system where only their products and their processors and their chipsets and their GPUs work together, do you think as a gamer you would enjoy the fact that this one brand controls it all to give you that experience? Well, then it will be much like a, a gaming console, right? Like yeah. PS5 or the Xbox. Nintendo. So it's not much. Yeah. Of, yeah. If, let's say, five years, six years down the line, Apple releases a chipset that says that every game plays at 4K, 30 FPS, or 60 right. FPS guaranteed, then I then me being on a Windows PC who has to upgrade his graphics car and they are like 4,000 dirhams and the CC APU is bo 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 bottlenecking. So I have to change that and the RAMs are slow. I have to change that. I would rather have one system, even for PC games, I would rather have a console like experience where it's one hardware, De developers have to make games for this hardware and great, and it runs great. So more like a console, which is what, Apple will kind of do with their thing, but Fair. yeah, I'm I'm down for it. Fair, Sam. Um, from a productivity standpoint, I think I'm probably too old school. I like the fact of using a laptop. Just from okay. an, ergon an ergonomic standpoint, primarily, right. like I had my wife had a iPad Mini at some point, and just the okay video consumption it gets heavy to hold in your hand after a while. Mm. Like a phone mm. is much more ergonomic to hold. I do find I consume media on, on a phone, but that tablet form factor, the weight comes into it. Whereas with the laptop, I don't have to worry. I like it literally lie on my back and thing, put yeah. a laptop on my chest and the screen stays in place. Or if I want to type, because you got to think productivity, you, you're primarily going to be typing, right? Depending right. on what you're doing. So now you've got the iPad with a, some sort of keyboard. Like it's just, mm. it's not there. I think if you're in, like you said, video editing and things like that, where you're just using, you know, the stylus or whatnot, maybe. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. Fair. Because for me, the thing is, the, the for me, it's the exact opposite of what you said. The reason I want to use it is for that versatility, right? So like, Literally, I was using so I was using um, Luma Fusion, which is an, an iPad dedicated uh, video editing app on the iPad. Mm -hmm. And without thinking, because I've used it decently when I used to be completely on the iPad, I found myself like quickly like having it in horizontal format on the magic on the magic keyboard. Then okay. I just like lift it off, 
and do some quick edits on it with the with the pencil. Then I was like, oh, I'm lazy and I don't want to. This part of editing, which is all on the timeline, I can just do while like laying down. And then I'm continuing on. And all this, like if I had a time lapse, was me moving around the room in various uh, mm. formats, right? And again, I know this is very specific to one particular small thing I'm doing, but that versatility is what appeals to me so much because no other laptop, even though we have these awesome Asus laptops and so on, the, 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 the this versatility that Apple provides is all I want. Like, I don't even care. It's not even about the iPad or the iPad OS. Make the MacBook the same thing. And I'm I'm on board. I'm done. Like, I will buy it. Okay. No problem. No questions asked. So, um, so yeah, man, the iPad will always be interesting, but we are expecting uh, new iPads, hopefully in May. This is the first time in many years that the release has been pushed for two months consecutively. And obviously that's all unofficial news, but the rumor was for April, then it, sorry, it was for March, then it moved to April and now it's in May. Um, rumor is they're having problems with the displays because they have made the bezels ultra thin. So mm. that's going to be interesting to see as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much uh, rumors about the iPad. Pro. Happy days? Pro. <laughs> yes, pro. Fine. Right. Let's jump on to Humane AI pin then. A lot of yeah. controversy. Yeah. I was... Listen, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to take this claim for myself. I was first in line to say that this is a nonsense product. All right, uh, and I, then I saw it. I remember you saying that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw it at MWC, and I and I was sure it's a nonsense product, but obviously because Marcus Brownlee said everyone's going to talk about. I mean, it just helps that he has 18 million followers. But like, we saw it at MWC, right? And for those who don't know, who are listening, um, what is the Humane AI pin? It is basically a small little, like a brooch, like a pin that goes onto your shirt or your jacket or whatever you're wearing on top. And it's got a small little laser projector. It's got a camera and it's got a bunch of other sensors. And the idea is that you interact with it verbally while talking all day long. It has a few gestures and the laser projector projects all the text or imagery onto your palm. Uh, which I think is just the stupidest thing I've ever heard of in my life. Uh, if I have to do all the effort of raising my hand out, why don't I just have a smartphone in that hand? And like, to be fair, mm. Marcus Brownlee showed this in a video he did where he basically was walking outside and he, uh, I think it was on Twitter where he put it on X, sorry. And he basically walks outside, uh, po po pokes the pin or whatever, presses the pin and says, what's in front of me? And in the time it's thinking about it, he just takes out his phone, clicks on Google, opens the camera, boom, cyber truck. And then like, then the pin says, oh, what you're standing in front of is a cyber truck. And I'm just like, what is the point of this? Like, no, I, I, I just don't understand what the point is here. And apologies, Amara, you're going to have to figure out how to bleep in audio form as well as video form. But uh, but I, I, I just don't get it. Have you guys seen the videos? What do you guys think about it? I, I have, uh, and I saw two, three videos, like proper reviews of it. And I thought about mm -hmm. it. I thought, I thought like how this can be useful to anybody. Right. And, and I couldn't come up with an idea. This is absolutely mm -hmm. terrible. It is, Thank you. it is a concept. It, it is something In that concept, solves it's a good idea. Reality. No, you know, it, it, it's a solution to a problem that does not exist. exist. Oh my Ooh, God. Wants Mic drop. Mike drop. is on a streak of giving us hooks for social media. <laughs> Moof is on a streak. That's a hook right there. Mark that producer. Man. That is a hook. But yeah, man. Uh, this, yeah. This... Like I, I really thought about it. Like that thing is nice. It's compact. It does the job. But there's nothing your smartphone can't do 10 times faster. So right. then... What went through the developer's mind to say like, hey, let's make something like this so, and make it $700 with, with low battery with power? Subscription. With a subscription. With subscription, yeah. There's so many things you need to pay for. Like, it's, how does that make sense? And the thing is, the, the, the part that is baffling me, okay, is, okay, if this technology was some revolutionary form of technology where 
somehow, I don't know how the technology would work, but let's say it's a pin and it's on me all day long, right? It's just on me all day long. And it's on and it's always listening and I can just like talk to it through the day. I still could understand. But if you're going to take half an hour to give me, okay, that's an exaggeration, but if you're going to take like 30 seconds to give me a simple answer, it serves no purpose. I'd rather take Siri and Siri is the worst of the lot. Like, <laughs> it just, it's no, it, it makes no... You don't think that could be solved with an update? So it seems to be what... the time of the response is the most major disappointment no, no, no. So, for the device. Okay, and then let's take a step back because there are lots, a lot more issues. One, there were heating issues where people felt it got too warm on their chest. Two, uh, there were issues where people saw um, it just did not do basic functions like... Unfortunately, folks, uh, Danish has run into uh, some technical difficulties, but uh, we are going to jump onto our next topic, which is going to be PS5 rumors. I think this yep. is Fuddle's um, perfect topic yeah. to discuss. Uh, so, yeah, so the, uh, there have been rumors about the PS5 Pro for a while, but now things are uh, so already fine in terms of what the specs will offer. Okay. So PS5 Pro... Uh, it seems like it will have 10% CPU boost, which okay. is kind of small, but uh, it will have 45% GPU boost. Oh, damn. Which is, yeah. That's, that's decent. That's decent for a, for a mid-generation mid -generation refresh, uh, mm. but it will not amount to much because I, the games are kind of not optimized to utilize you know, get that, that. Little, yeah yeah it's, right, it, it, right, it, right. It, yeah it'll not be much but the biggest thing that the ps5 pro will bring is playstation's own uh upscaling te technology it's called okay. ps it's called pssr i forgot the full name uh but 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 it's like dlss or amd fsr where you know it will take a, a lower re resolution basic uh base re resolution and upscale it to 4k now with oh, this uh, I it, with this I think Sony is hoping that they would hit the 4k 60 FPS mark that the ps5 still hasn't kind of mm. uh, but there there are also rumors that they, they are also focusing on ray tracing so ray tracing 4k and 60 FPS I really really don't think that it will be able to do it uh but let's see how it is because if playstation is using their own image upscaling and they just have to work with one hardware right so yeah, yeah if they can be, system and everything so. yeah yeah exactly so if they can optimize that tech for the ps5 pro and really offer that great image quality and a boost in performance with the boost that the CPU and GPU has, I think it should be able to do. Uh, one more interesting thing that, one more interesting thing about the PS4 Pro is that it, it also aims for 8K re resolution. I don't know why, kind of pointless. No one has 8K no TVs or monitors. No, nobody needs it. I, I think it's just a fancy marketing term. If, if at all, they will use it. Mm. Now, Sam, I, I want to ask, what do you think the price will be for the PS5 Pro? Because for me, uh, so Sony said that they will not reduce the price of the PS5 in the coming years or in the future because they don't have that much room uh, mm. to, to scale down the price uh, with their manufacturing process. So okay. if the PS5 is, so if the PS5 is $500 and the PS5 Pro comes out like 700 Man, I, I think that is just going to fail miserably. Nobody, no, nobody is going to spend seven hundred dollars for a mid-gen refresh of a console. Well, what, what, what do you think about the price? I think there's enough of a fan base for it. Like, look at Apple, right? Or look at mm. any phone device, say ten years ago. I didn't see myself paying five grand for a flagship device. Like, if it's going to be the mm. latest thing, then it seems only right that, yeah, it's probably going to be at that, you know, at that price point. 
will every mm. you know everyone adopt it and everything probably not but then at some point once the manufacturing process and everything cost gets reduced then probably more people are going to you know buy the the P- regular ps5 instead mm. so mm. it wouldn't surprise me i mean look at apple vision right like who thought yeah but yeah i it. mean but but with Apple Vision Pro, I, it's it's a unique tech, right? The PS5 is just yeah, of course. a faster PS5. I I I I would want a little more stuff from the PS5 Pro to actually consider buying it. I would yeah. I I will not jump to the PS5 Pro unless there is significant benefits to not just the pr- performance because I love to play games at high resolution and high frame rate, but mm. for me. The PS5 Pro in the pre- no, for me the PS5 with the pre- performance mode which which has 60 FPS and upscaled image yeah. for me that's fine for me that's fine and if the main target is ray tracing then that also is not a seller for me because games that use ray tracing very few games actually make proper use of it like. Mm. Sa- Cyberpunk is one of the few games that really nails uh, ray tracing and other games that don't use it well, they just have like reflections and this and that, which just doesn't add anything to the game. So unless PS5 or Sony uh, ensures that the developers can really make use of ray tracing, then the PS5 Pro would be something that I would be interested in. Otherwise, it's just going to be a little faster PS5 and for me, it's not. Not much, and and for seven hundred. To... Sorry, no, go for it. I was done. No, but don't you think from it's a chicken and egg scenario when it comes to ray tracing? Like, it's mm. currently there only from a PC standpoint, right? Mm. So no, no. this is now putting it on another platform that then would justify, let's say, you're a, a Ubisoft. Oh, we're developing ray tracing only for a PC market, which is that much smaller than a console market. This would then maybe push ray tracing that much more further for uh, developers to actually utilize ray tracing. Uh, no, so, so PS5 and the Xbox they do support ray tracing, uh, mm. but but we haven't seen developers really oh, they utilize used, it. They haven't used it. Oh, no, no. I'm so so game. so games do have ray tracing mode or ray tracing features like Spider Man Two has, which does it really well as well, but. It, it always comes at a significant loss in frame rates, but doesn't add too much visually to the game. So it's not worth it. Mm. Now, developers are not utilizing ray tracing as a core feature in their games, because I think they are limited by the console, which is the primary, pa- primary platform they develop their games for. Yeah. Uh, on PC, you have 4090, which is way, ma- way more ca- capable of doing ray tracing. It has ray tracing cores filled to the brim with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then makes- games don't yeah, games don't utilize ray tracing feature because the consoles are so limited. So mm. let's see how the PS4 Pro stacks up and then maybe we can see that visual jump. But I don't think that's gonna happen this generation. Uh we'll see, we'll see. I I'm curious how yeah I, I'm curious how Sony will put position the PS5 Pro and how they will price it because that will make the entire difference on how it will be taken by the fan base. But yeah. we'll see when whenever yeah. they release it this year. So segueing on from video games and consoles to TV shows, we had Fallout release on mm. uh, Amazon Prime. Uh, have you watched the show? I've watched three episodes, three and a half episodes. Uh, and absolutely love it a hundred percent sold on this show excellent adaptation of the core lore of the game mm-hmm. and the visual aesthetics uh, it feels like fallout brilliant brilliant nolan brothers do not miss no matter if it's christopher or john Jonathan, both of them are amazing at their jobs whatever they do fair fair i've but watched a few episodes play- yeah. I haven't played the game, so that that's what I was most curious on because you've had, mm. you know, previous shows like you know Halo and and stuff like that where it kind of got a lot of backlash. I feel for the 
mm-hmm. portraying the characters, you know, differently or the storyline or, you know, words, words to that effect. So at least with this, I like the fact that I know of Fallout, you know, and, and all of that and Pip-Boy and the little gadget on your arm and things. But that's where it stops. And you can really watch the show and the whole world with which you're in. And you don't have to have played the game for it to make sense or anything. And it's, mm. it's fantastically produced. It looks really, really amazing. This character, the Metal Brothers thingy, is my least favorite, though. The guy's an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm an yeah. idiot. Like, how is he still alive? Yeah. But I, I think that's how he's portrayed to be. He's just too over eager to prove himself. Mm. And he kind of stumbles on that thought all the time. But I've not seen the entire show. So, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. How so let's wait and see how it develops. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, so yeah, the, that's cool. Yeah. That, that's the beauty of Fallout and especially the, the Last of Us that Halo missed. It's like, Mm. Halo took the original story and tried to do something different with it. The Last of Us took the main story and added to it. And yeah, Fallout, just sprinkled something. Yes, yeah, sprinkled. And Fallout is not based on the game. It's based on the same universe. And this show is canon. Uh, so from what I've read is that Fallout, the TV show, is 15 years after the Fallout games. And uh-huh. uh, all the characters, all the story elements, they are all part of the actual Fallout canon. So it adds beautifully to it without t- touching the games, but it has a plenty of fan servicing. It's just amazing uh, approach to how to make this, uh, this show by taking what's best about Fallout, the core elements, the, the imagery, the sound effects, everything, and just making an amazing show. So yeah. b- very well done, very well done. And even even from a gaming standpoint, I think it broke some records for on, yeah. on stream. Yeah, yeah, Fallout 76, which is the last Fallout game that released, is a multiplayer survival game. So it now has nearly 40,000 players. Which, oh, is wow. my, which is which is slightly more than its previous peak uh, con- oh, on current players on Steam of thirty two thousand. So okay. yeah, definitely the show has has uh, you know ignited curiosity among players or even new players to try a Fallout game. I have seen so many posts on Reddit where they are re re downloading or replaying Fallout Four or Fallout Three. And to be honest. I'm kind of curious about going back to Fallout 4. Fallout 4 for me is a blind spot because I bought the game. I pre-ordered it. I played 10 hours, hated it, never played it. But uh, I'm I'm thinking maybe I'll I'll try to get back. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of Fallout 4, it's going to get a next-gen update very soon. So probably I'll wait for that. The next-gen will have uh, 4K, 60 FPS, maybe improved oh, nice. textures and will be released for the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. So yeah, yeah, definitely. It's coming out on April 25th, if I'm not wrong. So I, I might just wait for it. Yeah. Okay. That'll be cool. Well, I think that's it pretty much, folks, for this episode. Uh, let us know. Like I say, we want to try out the Nothing Earbuds or uh, our, what do you think of Fallout TV show? Uh, maybe you're going to jump back in the game. And uh, we'll catch you in the next episode. I'm Sam. Mufadal. I'm Mufadal. See ya. Take it easy.